Martyr is a legendary Bundeswehr infantry fighting vehicle and one of the symbols of the Cold War, which fortunately never turned into a hot war. Its participation in modern conflicts and peacekeeping operations provided an opportunity to assess the capabilities of this combat vehicle and also understanding of the needs for new enhancements in the future modifications. BMP, on the other hand, is also considered a legend, because it participated in countless conflicts and wars on all continents. Invasion of Czechoslovakia, Soviet-Afghan War, Arab-Israeli, First and Second Karabakh War, and many, many more. And of course the most recent conflict, that started on February 24, 2022, and became the largest military conflict on the 21st century. Soon these two legendary infantry vehicles will face each other in the battle. Who will win in this fight? And could this small number of these German vehicles make a difference on the battlefield? The Martyr infantry fighting vehicle, which was developed for the German armed forces in 1971, after serious modernizations, still remain in service and is one of the most tested weapons of this kind in the world. The Bundeswehr will deliver to Ukraine 40 Marders 1A3 variant. It is the most common version of this system, and there are total 2,100 of these vehicles in Germany. So it can be assumed that in addition to these 40 vehicles already pledged, the Bundeswehr will be able to hand over an additional large number of these infantry vehicles. After all, it is the most mass-produced IFV in Europe. But that's of course if we don't count Soviet BMPs, there are plenty of them in Russia. Around 500 BMP-1 in service and an additional 7000 in storage. 3000 BMP-2s and about 700 more modern BMP-3s. However, they also suffered heavy losses. As of January 1, 2023, according to Oryx project, the Russian armored forces have lost more than 3200 different armored vehicles in the war in Ukraine. These include armored fighting vehicles, infantry fighting vehicles, armored personnel carriers, and infantry mobility vehicles, so basically BMPs, BTRs, MTLBs of different modifications. And there is just the documented losses, so actual number may be even higher. In the 1950s the German armed forces begin to recover, and while the German Democratic Republic was forced to use Soviet-made equipment and weapons, the German Federal Republic could develop whatever it deemed necessary. One of the first combat vehicles developed by West Germany was the Marder, which in German means Martin. This combat vehicle was developed in parallel with the Soviet BMP-1, but went into production a bit later. However, while the Soviet twice replaced BMPs with what they thought were more advanced vehicles, Germany has used Marders to this day and has only recently began to replace them with the more modern infantry fighting vehicle Puma. A whole group of German companies were involved in the development. So by the 1969, the Bundeswehr received 8 examples of the new fighting vehicle. In total, it took 9 years to create the new IFV. The project was finally approved in 1966, and three years later the prototype was demonstrated to the German military authorities. In the same year, Rheinmetall began its serial production, and the first vehicles were officially handed over to the German army in 1971. After the vehicle was accepted for service, the modernization program started immediately. In 1975, the Milan missile was adapted to be fired by the commander from his open hatch, and later Milan launch station were fitted to the martyrs. As for the protection, it is much better than in the Russian BMPs and BTRs. The martyr, like other NATO armored vehicles, was designed to be protected against the Soviet 14.5mm large caliber Vladimirov machine gun or KPV. 
It was mounted on various models of BTRs as well as a Soviet T-10 heavy tank. It was a very formidable Soviet weapon and it is also used by the Russian and Ukrainian armies in this conflict. For this reason, all Western armored vehicles of that period had the same requirement for protection against 14.5mm bullets, which was fully implemented in this vehicle. Apart from that, modern 1A3 with upgraded armor can withstand impact from automatic 30mm gun mounted on Russian BMP2 and BMP3, and also protected against fragments of mortar rounds and artillery shells of large caliber, like Soviet 120 or even 152mm, depending on distance, of course. The German motor has a front engine configuration, which gives it additional protection against shaped charge munition. In other words, a projectile simply cannot reach the troop compartment. Russia, as you know, has its own way on doing things, so BMP3 has an unconventional layout. The engine placed in the back of the vehicle. You may be thinking that Russian BMP is like Porsche 911. Well, it's not the case. Each option has its advantages. The forward-mounted engine provides additional protection for the crew and troops and also allows troops to disembark through the large rear exit hatch, which is the most convenient approach in combat. But at the same time, rear-mounted engine offers better visibility for the driver and a better weight distribution along the length of the vehicle. By the way, the motor actually has a problem with visibility, namely with blind spots, which is why the soldiers in these photos stick their heads out of the hatches. Despite this problem, the front engine and better armor overall make the German vehicle more secure, and for an infantry vehicle, this is one of the most important criteria. Another important factor why the BMP has weak armor is its chassis. I described it in detail in the previous video when I compared it to the American Bradley. But in short, the chassis design simply does not allow to equip the vehicle with additional armor and thereby make it heavier. It simply won't go. As these vehicles were originally designed to transport soldiers, it is worth considering the convenience of transporting and disembarking soldiers. As I said earlier, the German motor has a large rear exit hatch, through which soldiers are embarked and disembarked while being protected by the armor. Although it is not as convenient as on the American Bradleys, where, thanks to its height, soldiers can walk almost full growth, but this solution was the first of its kind. German engineers have fought for many years ahead, and this approach is used to this day in the production of modern armored infantry vehicles. Now let's see how this was implemented in the Russian BMP-3. As I mentioned earlier, the engine is installed in the back of the vehicle, and the exit hatch is placed above the engine with additional doors on the top. And this approach is much worse, because to leave the vehicle, the soldier must first rise and then go down. In this case, soldiers became easy target for enemy fire. The BMP-3 has a 100mm cannon, it's a powerful Soviet rifle gun developed in 1990s, but it has accuracy issues. Also BMP-3 equipped with 30mm automatic coaxial gun with a fire rate of about 300 shots per minute. Murder has an excellent 20mm automatic cannon with the highest rate of fire and good accuracy. Yeah. 20mm a little smaller than American Bradley's 25mm Bushmaster gun, but it wins in fire rate. 1000 rounds per minute in Marder versus 200 rounds per minute in M2 Bradley. This gun has effective firing range up to 2500 meters against ground targets and 1600 meters against flying aircrafts. Coaxial MG3 machine gun. Additionally, Milan anti-tank guided missile launcher, with one missile ready to fire and six inside the vehicle. It is a good weapon against tanks and other armored equipment, and the Ukrainians already know how to use it. France has already transferred several dozens of these in 2022, and there are confirmed successful application of this system. A very important point is that the motor has nothing in the vehicle apart from these six anti-tank guided missiles that could cause a detonation of the ammunition. 
and that's really important. As for the 100mm cannon installed on the BMP3, its presence also implies the presence of 100mm shells inside the vehicle, which, if hit by enemy shell, can detonate and cause turret blown off. This has happened repeatedly in this war and with BMPs and of course with tanks. Mortar can run up to 60 km per hour and has a range of 600 km, which is comparable to the Russian BMP-3. Also Mortar, as opposed to BMP, has good mine protection. For this purpose, additional armor was installed in the upgraded versions. By the way, the weak mine protection as well as poor sights protection that cannot withstand even a small arms fire from short distances often leads to the fact that the troop sits on the top of the vehicle and not inside. But this risk is more than justified by a proper understanding of the situation around, the speed of disembarking, less risk for the entire crew in case of detonation of the ammunition.